Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. Well, it's promptly noon here in Ohio, Eastern Time. Uh, welcome to all of you, wherever you may be joining us from. It may still be morning where you are, of course. Uh, we're here to talk about a, da a membership dashboard. Uh, I'm conducting today's webinar event. Rachel is out today. I don't typically do the membership webinars, but I've been asked to do this one today. Hopefully that'll work out for everybody here. Uh, before we get started on our topic, uh, click the little red arrow on the sidebar of your control panel, webinar control panel, minimize that, get it out of the way, or drag the control panel off to your second desktop if you've got a dual monitor set up. Again, it allows you just to get the full visual effect of the uh, webinar presentation today. We are recording today's webinar event, as we always do. Um, we'll have the event out on our website here sometime between now and either tomorrow or sometime early next week. So you can revisit that this topic um, if you'd like. Uh, we're here till about 12.20 Eastern Time. I will do my best to wrap things up right at 20 minutes after the hour out of respect you know, for you taking the time out to spend with us today. Uh, the topic is taken from our M204 workbook, pages 42 to 54. So if you have the M204 workbook, you may want to flip to page 42, basically the last section of the workbook. Excuse me. Last section of the workbook, that is the printed material that I'm using for today's presentation. Uh, if you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the control panel. I'll do my best to keep an eye on those. Um, if I can't answer them during the event, I'll do my best to stick around and get those answered um, at the very end. Please keep the questions on topic about our dashboard. There may be another webinar event or uh, you know available in future here that we'll have being around the website that answers those questions or our technicians are available by phone or email as well to help. Okay, so let's talk about the membership dashboard. Okay, so all of our modules in Church Windows, well, membership donations and accounting have dashboards. I don't, scheduler doesn't, if I recall correctly. But what we're talking about is right here. It's the dashboard right here above our little help question mark right here. Um, or, <clears throat> excuse me, we can go up here to special functions at the top, and we've got the dashboard right up here at the top center. Let me get up my highlighter here, steer some focus right there. There's my arrow. So we can access the dashboard in a couple different ways. And it's the same accessing all the dashboards in all of the modules that way. So in essence, the, the dashboard in all modules is basically the ability to produce some graphs and charts and some just nice visual reporting information in the forms of charts, graphs, pie graphs, what have you, um, that we otherwise wouldn't be able to, you know, rather than just our, you know, boring, straight old numeric reports or, you know, what have you, information reports. So we added this, a, you know, a few years ago, um, and I think it's probably a, well, for me personally, I think it's probably one of the most underutilized features in the, in the software, no matter which module you're in. But as we click on the donation, or the membership web uh, dashboard here, it opens up essentially our four different uh, charts, graphs, whatever you decide to call them that we have available. Excuse me, folks, got something in my throat here. Um, so we see here, let me get out my highlighter again, steer some focus. We've got our attendance graph right here. We've got our list item distribution graph. We've got our list item date uh, by date range and age range distribution reports. Okay, those are the four different types of graphs, uh, charts that we have available in the uh, in the dashboard for membership. Okay, as we do with all of them, just FYI, these little toggles across the top. So right here, you know, we've got these little little switches here, basically, that when we click on those, like I go, okay, I don't want to run my attendance graph or see that. I click on that, it disables that. So it hides it, okay? I can essentially do that for any of them, okay? And then I just click on them and they come back, okay? Let me get rid of my drawings here real quick. Uh, so then if I want to maximize and just see one while still leaving the others visible, all I have to do is just click the little uh, 
little maximize button right here in the upper left corner of each one of these. Hopefully everybody can see my little yellow circles that I'm drawing here with my highlighter. That if I click on any one of those, it allows me to click on the maximize that and it maximizes in this case my attendance graph and allows me to see that in more close detail on that. Okay. And if I do, you know, when I'm, when I'm done with it, I can just simply click the little minimize button or the restore in the upper right corner and then it goes back to my four reports. Okay. All right. Further across the top, after you know those little toggle switches that can turn, you know, shut, you know, close those down or not, as the case may be, I've got my color menu or the reset to default, default layout. Okay, so if I go, okay, I've turned this off and maybe I've gone in and I've changed some colors to some different colors, and I want to go back to the original. Um, I can just simply click the res reset to default layout and it goes right back to the attendance graphs. Oh, it doesn't reset the color though. If I want to reset that, I have to reselect that. But you have a whole slew of colors um, of colors that you have to choose from here, folks. Notice in the menu there's one here called under the D's called default, which is the one that you know basically includes like a lot of blues and reds and inputs another a lot of other colors if we chose choose. But you can choose, and I, you know, we recommend play with some of these. You know, grayscale, eh, you know, basically gray might not work for some of these because there's a lot of information on some of them. But any of these others are, are are selections of colors that you may prefer over default. You know, so if I go down the list here and I kind of scroll down and I go, hey, let's choose red, and I choose that, and we notice that the 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 pies and the charts have some sort of relationship to red in some way, shape, or form. If I want to go back to the default, I simply choose default from the menu, and it goes back to my default, okay? Again, play with some of this stuff. It's, you know, you can always reset it and reset your default colors to the default option, okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit on page 45 about our attendance graph. So what I'm talking about here is the one in the upper left-hand corner right here, attendance graph right here, okay? Do have to have something entered in the form, in, in some way, shape, or form in, you know, for attendance for this to be able to work, okay? So first of all, you know, the first thing we see is our events and groups. So when I click that little down arrow, notice it brings up an option where I can choose to, you know, do I want to choose it for my worship events? Do I want to include groups and classes? Do I want to look at one versus the other? Okay. Uh, so you have to decide which one, what, what it is you want to run your attendance graph for. And so in our case, we're choosing to run it for, say, our worship events. I can check all of them. I can check just one if I want. Okay. So if I check just one and then click the down arrow or the menu up here to go away, it just reveals one you know, bar for my, my contemporary worship with the legend right here in the upper right, okay? But if I choose more than one, it will, if I've got attendance recorded for those, it'll show those. So clearly my contemporary worship is in blue and my Sunday AM worship is in red and I think my, e, uh, what is my other one? It's my evening worship. I don't have anything recorded attendance for that. Otherwise it would show another additional, uh, another bar there, okay? So you choose which events you want to include for your attendance, okay? Also, you enter the date range, okay? So you, you decide this information in terms of which events and what period of time you want to see on the report, okay? So on the right, we also see totals are counted. And what that refers to then is the, it's on page 46 there, talks about if we go up here to attendance, oh, i got to close out of my, graphing there, go to attendance entry. So if I could go pick a particular event here, let me go back to something earlier in the year, something where I know I've got something entered for that. Choose my maybe worship event, contemporary worship. So right here, see accounted is the names and of people that I actually have checked. Sorry, I'm sorry, the other one is that. The counted is this one right here. So let me get up my highlighter again. People counted. You see that? If that amount is entered and you have people checked, 
you can then run this report for either one of those options, but it's going to be for one or the other, but not both. Okay, so let's go back to that. Oop, let me get rid of my drawings here real quick. We go back to our dashboard. So right here, I've got it on totals. Those are the actual names of people that I have checked for both my contemporary worship and my Sunday AM. Okay, if I go to count it, it still does that, but notice that the graphs change because maybe I've counted a different number of heads than I had checked for names for people. You know, the counted essentially is so you've got somebody standing at the back of the sanctuary who's you know counting everybody, counting heads of people that are sitting in in the pews and you know, that is going to be probably a more accurate representation of the number of people who were actually attending as opposed to maybe if, you know, some people don't give you their name or they're not in your membership database to actually record them as having attended. But in either case, you can run whichever one is most effective for you, okay? So when we choose totals and we go to print, it now opens up our graph options on that. It's uh, You can choose either portrait or landscape. I'm a big fan of landscape but I click print, but if you prefer portrait, you can. So when I click print on that, it now opens that up in a very nice, you know, nice format that I can distribute to a meeting or print or email or do whatever I want to with, and it shows the dates across the bottom for my events, and it shows the basically the number of people based on recorded attendance here for the people that were actually there, okay? Uh, so again, just some useful information. Now, as I like to always point out about this is, you know, the lo more longer your date range, the more events that you select, the more convoluted that report might become, okay? So depending on how long you're running it for, how many worship events, what have you, you may want to either restrict the number of dates or the number of events to actually have it be useful information. If I look at the counted, it basically does the similar type of format but basically it's based on people counted as opposed to the names checked, okay? But similar format, you know, uh, blue for one service, red for the other, or whatever color I've decided, okay? And on page 47, it does show that in a nice portrait page orientation as opposed to landscape. I guess what I'm just suggesting is, you know, the, the longer you run it with the more information, the more less clear the information might become, okay? List item distribution on page 48. I'm kind of having to move on here, folks. We've got about seven minutes left, and I've got three more of these to go through. So um, these aren't quite as much, but there is a little work we've got to do on this. So we're talking about the one here in the upper right corner. So right here, list item distribution. Okay, so that's the one we're going to move on to now. So what this is is the list item distribution graph produces the pie, a pie chart graph for anything that's listed as list fields in your membership database. And what I mean by that is, basically when we go into our people, it's anything on the right-hand side or the left, as the case may be, that has these little drop-down menus where you can choose an item. Those are called list fields. You set up and assign a code and a description, and you have to choose them from the, something from the list Basically, to you know, you can enter comparative. We can have gather and comparative information on those. Okay, comparing totals from you know one selected code to another, as the case may be. Okay, so essentially, that's what that that's what that is. Those are what are list fields. Um, that's what you can choose from right here. So if we see, we can choose gender, health record, how came to membership, marital status, a whole slew of list fields. Okay, uh, and so let's say choose like gender for example so as the example shows there on page 48 notice it says male female okay i can choose which categories i include on that okay do i want to see members or visitors or members and visitors members or visitors your choice again the legend shows you know blue female red male also we can begin to now be able to see include blanks and so what that means is for somebody that maybe hasn't provided their gender for us, um, we can check the include blanks and it tells me exactly what percentage. I have 51 that are blank or 41% of my membership database. Members and visitors do not have not provided me with a gender identifier. Okay. Uh, labels outside, again, really does not put point, point nicely. That might be a little bit easier for folks to read. You know, it really depends. But similarly, you go to print choose your portrait or landscape page orientation, boom, there it is. 
says blank, male, female, okay? Again, same thing, you can change your color options on that. But let's maybe try another different field instead. So let's maybe try something like status code, okay? We've got a whole slew of these. But notice now, we've got a whole lot more status codes rather than, say, just gender, you know, male, female, or blank. So we've got a whole bunch of those. So in this case, this will also show the percentage outside if you do the labels outside. But if we go print, again, print again, boom, there's my pie chart with my different allocations of that. All oh, the percentage isn't included here. Let's look and see what that looks like with the information inside instead. Becomes, I think, a little bit more confusing on that. And then let's go to print. Yeah, it becomes a little bit harder to read. You know, maybe a little more so. It might be better on this type of report uh, to maybe do this with the uh, descriptor outside, the um, labels outside to do that, okay? All right, with about four minutes left, let's talk about the list items um, a by age range, okay? I'm kind of moving through things here. It's, we're up to page 50, and we're talking about the one in the bottom left-hand corner now, right down here. This becomes, again, uh, is, again, you have the ability to choose anything from your list fields, okay? Any of the list fields that we had seen before. We'll do status code again, okay? Let me get rid of my drawing. And you can either do a total or a description for either any of your member family categories, one or the other. But you establish the date range, okay? Church Windows doesn't, pr doesn't identify what age ranges you want. And how we identify those is the next level's high is always established by the previous level's low. So how simple this is to enter is, let's say one, tab over. We're going to make our next one, say, six, tab over twice. We're going to make the next one uh, uh, 12, and then the next one we're going to make uh, 19. Next one we're going to make 22, and then we're going to do, say, 30, 40, 50. I think you get the idea here. We just continue to hit the tab key twice, establishing the... So you get the idea that we establish the next level's low becomes the, it already knows what the previous level's high is. So now when I tab over, basically 70 and up, or I could do 80. Let's do 80 as well, and then we'll do anything there. So once I've established those, it then saves those. And now, again, notice it shows the different colors in the respective, you know, particular categories or status codes. And again, when I go to print, click print, it shows me the legend over here, what each one of the colors represents, and how many people I have that are either categorized as active member, child, visitor, potential associate, or inactive member. So again, basically the sort option here is, do I want to sort it by the description or the total? So in this case, it's by total, so it's always listing those with active member, which is our highest total first. If I go to description, we notice that that changes. Then it becomes listed alphabetically. Okay. So active member, associate, child, inactive, potential, and visitor. Okay? All right. Uh, but again, you establish those age ranges. Okay? So if you want to wipe them out, you basically just come in here. It'll remember them, though. And you just click the minus sign and clear them all out, and you can establish new ones. Okay? At your, it, you know, as, you, as you need to. And we have a similar type control when we're looking at our age range, our final area over here, our age range by distribution. And basically this is how many people we have in any particular range of age, ages that we want to set up. Again, you establish these. Okay, Church Windows doesn't establish them. Again, it will save them. But basically here, again, it shows a pie chart. I can do labels outside or inside. You know, again, it, when we're dealing with this many records or this many, you know, uh, groups in our in our range, putting them inside becomes a little less clear. Okay, so it might be better to do the the labels outside instead of inside. Eh, that's not too bad. That could be manageable. Um, but this one again might look better if the labels are on the outside. The and this one does produce the percentages on it. I really thought the other one would have the percentages on it too. That's what's really nice about this report. It tells us exactly how many people we have in each particular to age range, okay, which is kind of nice percentage-wise. Unknown, folks, with about 30 seconds here left, means 
The software cannot produce an age for any individual who does not have a birth date entered. So that tells us that we've got third, one third of our members have not provided us with a birth date. So the software still has, wants to categorize and throw those folks into a particular group as well on our pie chart on that for that, okay? So just a little, uh, again, a quick kind of 20 minute tour of our membership dashboard here. Play with this folks. You know, it's, you know, again, it's like I said, it's frequently underutilized and I think it's something that could really offer some different reporting options for your committees, for your folks, depending on what those folks want to see. So I'm going to end uh, my topic right there.